Okay. Cool. Um, my name is Peter. Uh, thank you, everyone, for warming this up for me, uh, especially Patrick, because we're going to have some crossover, but it's good that he went first. So um, anyway, uh, um, let, let me kind of give you, let me, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little um, background here first before I jump into uh, the gem. Um, HTML5 is out, and uh, it's kind of one of these things where I, I, I'm like, oh, I should be using HTML5, but I don't really know, you know, how, shouldn't we all be using it? You don't really know what the what you're supposed to be using at this point. It's like, how do you incorporate HTML5 into your site? It's kind of like this amorphous thing. So, so um, after doing some research, I, I came across a library called uh, uh, HTML5 Boilerplate, which is... Uh, written by a really smart guy named Paul Irish, who um, kind of took all the best practices that he could find out there for building an HTML5 site and put them all together in a big, um, a big project and released it as this, uh, as, as this project. Now, it has nothing to do with Ruby. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's more like a uh, site for, or it's more like a package for, you know, just generic sites. So, so anyway, um, you can find it up on GitHub here and, and follow it. The really cool thing about it, though, is it's up in production. There's all these people watching, uh, watching HTML5, and they're putting together the best styles, the best types of things. So I'm going to go ahead and go through, kind of tell what it is here. Um, it's all, all HTML5 ready. Uh, best practices um, by default, uh, progressive enhancements, graceful degradation, cross-browser, mobile optimized. Kind of going through this fast to keep in five minutes here. Um, so inside of it, we've got an index HTML, which kind of has a bunch of, um, a bunch of, uh, it's kind of the, the, the in includes all the stuff that you need uh, to, to be compliant. Um, it's got a reset CSS, which is essentially Eric Meyer's uh, reset, um, or reloaded, reset reloaded, uh, font CSS, which is a modified YUI, jQuery, of course, modernizer, which I'm not sure if that modernizers, um, it, it puts a bunch of uh, attributes or, or style classes, I guess, up in your in uh, your HTML tag, so that you can kind of say, hey, does, does this support? Some, you, you can query it essentially and say, does my um, does this browser support uh, gradients or whatever? So as opposed to like doing browser versions, which is kind of a bad practice. Um, and then of course IE fixes like uh, belated or uh, uh, backgrounds for, or transparent backgrounds for PNGs and HTML shiv. Um, so uh, there's some helper styles, inline media and print styles. So instead of like, it's no longer considered like good practice to, to put your um, HTML or your uh, media and print styles in a, in a um, like kind of separate file. You can just put them right in a media tag, or like a little media, um, I can't remember what it's called, but they're, they're all inlined in your style sheet now. Um, uh, there's an HD access file, if you want to use it, uh, cross-domain XML robots and some other stuff that, yeah. It, again, you can go up to uh, HTML5boilerplate.com and, and really good um, you know, kind of description of everything that's in there run through. It's a little behind as far as um, they, like, keeping up to date with what they're releasing new, because there's new stuff in there now, but um, anyway. So I, I just kind of want to clarify that it's not a framework. The HTML5 boilerplate is not a, a framework. It's much more like a, just a bunch of, he just, Paul Irish describes it as a bunch of best practices that you, you might want to use and take out, remove whatever you uh, don't need. So anyway, um, it's all great, and I, I, I got, pretty far along the path of using it and grading to my Rails projects, but I found it's pretty hard to take it and put it in a Rails project because the, you know, the directory structures are all different. Um, it's, it's much more kind of like suited for like a PHP project or something. Um, it's a bit verbose, a lot of, a lot of code in, in, in um, the index HTML. I mean, not a ton, but it's just, it's a little more than what you're used to with a, a default template. And, and the, the main thing I want to be able to do is merge in changes from upstream. So as as people are making these tweaks to the to the uh, styles, I wanted to be able to pull those into my project. So um, you know that that's kind of why I started looking into this. So uh, that's where what Patrick was talking about is really great because um, Compass will let you do these types of things and and maybe modular 
I can't say that word, modularized. Uh, modularized HTML5 boilerplate a little bit so you can pick and choose the things that you want. Um, so uh, the gem is HTML, or Compass HTML5 boilerplate. It's actually, the gem name is actually HTML5 boilerplate, but it kind of has the name in there to make it a little more clear what it is uh, on the, in the GitHub account. So um, you can go get it there. There's instructions for installing it. It's, it essentially is a generator installs it into your Rails project and um, and uh, installs the gem is used in the background to to provide a little bit of support for it. and all the all the uh, SAS libraries are, are in the gem so here are the features that are inside of it got a it, it is a compass extension I guess I should I should clarify what it is so this, so, this, so uh, it's it's a compass version of the HTML5 boilerplate project and so it, it, it's an extension you, in compass you can build these things called compass extensions which are uh, essentially just extra functionality you can add on so Patrick named a few of them already like um, like uh, blueprint is one 960 and and keep in mind this can be used with any of those you can install them both at the same time they kind of it's nice because they kind of keep them all separate but they can be used together so you could integrate something like blueprint or 960 with this fine if you wanted to it's um you know you just you you use the mix-ins for them and, and they should be able to coexist so um, so th what it contains is boilerplate CSS as a compass library um, uh, installs some S some SCSS I, I use SCSS because it seems to be a little more um, normal to people who haven't used SAS before but you could convert it if you want uh, has Haml layouts uh, for your header footer and flashes so pretty much I, I tried to keep everything the same as you know as close to HTML5 boilerplate project to kind of do it justice because so, people are like well if I'm using this I want to use HTML5 boilerplate so it really is similar but there's a lot of things that um, that it includes that are more rail specific so stuff like um, some some helpers uh, uh, it has the smarts since we know for in development or production it has the smarts to load jQuery compressed or uncompressed um, you know uh, has a Google YML for loading your because part of the HTML5 boilerplate is loading uh, Google Analytics async and, and a few other things so so I kind of added a few extra a little functionality around that if you want to store your your uh, Google YML or your account IDs for Google in there and and it'll load it for you uh, installs jQuery UGS driver by default um, all all comments are stripped out on compilation so there's a lot of comments in it but you can it strips it out which is cool so you don't get that extra you know that HTML5 boilerplate the upstream project by Paul Irish has they have it they're working on a build script so they it's an ant script you have to install Java and everything and it will it will uh, do kind of the same stuff they'll strip out the comments and everything but I figure hey why not just use uh, SAS for this to be kind of nice um, CSFR meta tags included and also um, it can be installed as a standalone project if you want uh, to run it there's a, another just run the compass command and it'll install it as a as a plain you know standalone project but I would almost recommend if you're going to do that I would more look at, at using uh, uh, HTML5 boilerplate itself so you can jump into a few quick examples here um, here's a here's a mix in and this one right here is a one to align input labels with with um, form elements, you know, labels with form elements. And so, like I said, it's kind of like best practices, but um, you can you can choose to include this mix in or not. The, the you notice in here too, there's also like IE6 and IE7 classes in there. It assumes you have those, and I'll get to how those are put into your um, into your page. But the the um, the idea is you include you include a mix in. Let's move move here to the next page. So this would be like your app style sheet style dot CSS. I think Patrick was calling his app dot SCSS. But um, import I'm you know this is this is just a little bit of it. But importing HTML5 boilerplate and then you can include whatever mix ins you want to use and it'll drop it into your um, into your style sheet. So typical usage would maybe look a little more like this you'd have um, an import of the project of HTML5 boilerplate and then it would go down the list and you can say okay I want resets I want fonts styles and helpers and then um, uh, importing then you start 
putting your own stuff in there, and then there's this uh, partials media, which would have all of your, like the inline media. So this would all compile to one, um, to just one uh, style sheet, which is nice because you, you're not hitting, you're not making separate HTTP requests for each, um, for each one, so. And then there's a few helpers. This is kind of what I was talking about. Here's, this is like the first line in the index.html for, for HTML5 boilerplate. And, and so the idea here is, okay, you know, Paul Irish kind of says, don't, don't take, don't have a separate IE style sheet, you know, separate IE and, um, and normal style sheets. So like put them all in one. But then what we're doing here is on the HTML tag, we put a class of IE6 or I'm going to outline this, IE6 or IE7 or IE8. And these are all just conditional you know, HTML tags, but you would normally see, a lot of times you see like these are used to like include a script, a JavaScript, I'm sorry, a CSS tag. So here we're doing it more like we're putting a, a IE6 or IE7 tag on our, um, on our HTML class. And then inside our style sheet, what we can do is is scope certain functionality to those to those tags. So the way that um, HTML5 boilerplate handles this is a little cleaner. First, this is in whoa, putting things to sleep here. This is the Haml version, and as you see, uh, there's a IE HTML tag, which is actually a Rails helper, and it handles all of that code that you see up above, like you know, putting that all together. Outputs it as a um, as a compass block, and, and you're good to go. So those two those two things are equivalent. And last, there's this Google YML example, which just kind of shows what you can do with that and uh, how it will load. So a um, few improvements I want to make to it. Maybe make you know Compass has kind of this clumsy um, Compass command, and it does like an installation. You know, it, it installs into your project, and so in order to install in your project, it kind of overwrites a lot of stuff. It would be nice to have, instead of that, have like maybe Thor or a Rails generator uh, to do that. I think maybe that would be something that would be nice for Compass to do, but um, I'd almost want to just write a Rails generator in the meantime that, that maybe will install this, because in that way, when you pull down updates, you can uh, you could selectively decide which files to overwrite. Now keep in mind, too, though, that it's a gem, and all the CSS is in the gem. So the cool thing is bundle update will pretty much get you most of the changes that are happening upstream in, in uh, HTML5 boilerplate. So uh, that's, that's the, you know, you don't really have to touch your layouts that much. The layouts get stay just the same. You just get the new CSS all the time if you want to get some of the layout changes. You might have to run the generator again. Um, so an ERB version isn't supported yet, um, but Somebody actually just uh, did a pull request for one, so I'm kind of working that out. And uh, CSS and JS compression, maybe in the future. I know there's some gems out there to do that. And I don't know, maybe CoffeeScript, other ideas. There's really not much JavaScript that's in there, just a default. Like, it hooks up to your application JS. But um, uh, otherwise, ideas, um, welcome. And uh, that's it. Question?